Hi, this is Keith Cutter with EMFRemedy.com. It is December of 2024. We're going to be talking about recent changes that have been made to the Safe and Sound Pro 2 Radio Frequency Radiation Meter, or RF Meter. I'm an unabashed fan of both Safe Living and the Safe and Sound uh, line of products. I was a customer, I was a client of Safe Living long before I came an affiliate. In a few moments, we're going to begin talking with Kevin Duong. Kevin is an EMR technician with Safe Living, and he's going to be talking us through the changes that have been made with the newest uh, Safe and Sound Pro 2 meter. And the bottom line is this. If you already own a Safe and Sound Pro 2, you likely don't need to run out and buy the latest version. However, you might want to take a listen and hear what the new product um, design changes are and decide whether you need uh, any of these new features. Affiliate link in the description if you'd like one. Here we go. My guest today is Kevin Duong. He's an EMR technician with Safe Living Technologies. Kevin, welcome, and thanks for being here. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Looking thank you. So, so um, you have a new Safe and Sound Pro 2, and it looks a little bit different. The functioning is just about the same, but I thought we might spend a little bit of time talking people through the differences. So this has been one of my favorite meters of all time. This is the Safe and Sound Pro 2. Uh, that was current like last month. <laughs> this began uh, shipping recently. This is a Safe and Sound Pro 2, and it has just a few differences. So, Kevin, I'm wondering if you can talk us through, uh, first of all, the reasons for making changes to the product, and then we can go through the individual changes that were made and any kind of impact on how somebody might interface with the device, um, and just sort of the whole mindset in, in revising the product. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, um, we, I guess we started making these devices a, a long time ago, um, and we're just slowly over time wanted to expand our line, the safe and sound line. Um, and then I think we're just at a point where we want to make sure that it's almost like, like almost like branding as one way to put it. And um, we kind of want to streamline it so that everyone's familiar with it. So if you ever come across a safe and sound device, you kind of know, oh, this is, this is safe living's, um, safe and sound brand. Right. So, um, we started with the classic three, we started, uh, making the changes to the, basically the, the outer shell of the device, um, all of the circuitry inside all their devices, uh, those usually don't get updated, and if they do, um, those are usually renamed. Um, so, yeah, we're just trying to make sure that everything stays in unison um, just to, to build a good uh, connection with our, our customers. All right, so let's start with the uh, what I might call the user interface, where the human interacts with the device. So one of the things that I've noticed is that in the old version of the meter, there are two slide switches here. Uh, one controls... Uh, turning the meter on and off and the sound function and the other, the volume of the sound, low, medium, or high. And I noticed that you've gone away from the slide switches in favor of the push button switches, which I think are going to be a big help. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so uh, we started the push buttons, I guess, um, I think earlier in the year, uh, the change was made on the Classic 3. Um, so again, all of our devices before this year were all the switches. Um, so for the classic three, we tried out this, the, the push button, uh, main reason would be that we found that we were having some issues here and there. It's not nothing alarming or anything like that, but we did notice that, um, some customers are saying their slides were getting stuck, um, or just, uh, I, I guess just wasn't working properly. Um, so we found, or we decided that the button might be a lot easier to, to gauge, um, pretty much, um, you're just pushing a button, right. Um, and, and yeah, that, that's kind of where we're at with that. 
And then, yeah, like I said, the newer devices we released recently, so the millimeter wave, um, same with the EM3, those will all have the push buttons as well. So that's kind of why we made the change to the Pro 2 as well. Okay. So again, people who are familiar with using your other products, uh, it won't be a new experience to interface with this particular product. No, for sure. For sure. Exactly. Now, you've also made a change in how people access the sound function. So I'll just mention that it can be incredibly helpful to hear the sound of what RF you're being exposed to in the environment for the purposes of being able to find a nearby source, for example. So Wi-Fi sounds different than Bluetooth, sounds different than Zigbee, sounds different than a, a smart meter. So how did people access the sound function on the old meter and how do they do it on the new? Yeah, so on the old meter, um, so if you're looking at the meter right in front of you, um, on the old one, the switch on the right side, the right-hand side, so that was just a switch that went from low, medium to high. Um, so you see there, so um, whatever saw setting you had that switch set to, as soon as you turn the device on up to the sound setting, that would be what it was registered as. Um, so with the newer one, the push button, um, the same button that's used on the left-hand side, so the on and off button, um, pretty much you would click that button once, and then another change is on the display, you'll see that there's going to be a sound bar. So you'll see there's sound level one, you click it again, you'll get sound level two. And then if you click it again, that'll be sound level three. So those three levels correspond to how loud the speaker is emitting at. And then if you click it one more time, it'll shut off. Um, and then you'll see that that bar go away. Um, so that's kind of our way of um, supplementing the, the way you're seeing the switch set to low, medium, and high. Whereas on the button one, you can't really click and then see it's on low, medium, or high. So we um, supplemented that with the, the speaker on the screen. So it's just a little bit way, a little bit different way of interacting with the device. It's not a new function. Um, having three levels of loudness is not new for the Safe and Sound Pro 2. It's just that the way you're going to access that would be a little bit different. And then let's talk about the units and the reset function button. Uh, the other button over here. Yeah, so with uh, with the, the old and the new, uh, button kind of stays the same. Um, basically, if you give it a click once, um, the max value that's um, registered on the screen will, will reset. Um, so basically, from the time you turn the device on and the time you click that button, the highest reading that you measure will hold in that max line there. Um, so that's kind of good for... Um, detecting sources that are pulsing very quickly that your eye can't really see or the device doesn't display on the peak reading. Um, with the both devices, the max button stays the same. You just give it a click instantaneous and then it, it, it resets. Um, and then for the unit of measurement, so for the new one, um, the unit of measurement, so if you want to change it, all you're doing is holding that max reset button. So if you click and hold it, it should change the unit to volts per meter. And then you can do the same to go back to microwatts per meter squared. You would just click and then hold. And then whichever unit you desire, that's the one you want to keep it on. Um, and then for the old one, um, for the old one is a little bit different. Um, so for the old one, you would you would hold the max reset button while it's off so that the unit's powered off. You'd hold the max reset button. And then you would switch the device on. And then you'd shut it off and then turn it on normally. And then that would be the unit of measurement. Okay, great. And then just just to emphasize, um, however you however you use your your meter, you're probably going to want to keep it that way. So I use microwatts per square meter. Yep. I don't have any use for volts per meter in my particular work, so I, I never bother changing that. Yep. It might be the kind of thing you change sort of once um, while you own it, or if you want to compare it to somebody else who's reading in a different way exactly exactly yeah it, we just kind of want to give that flexibility to the to the user because some people when they transition from other devices to our our safe and sound they're familiar with the volts per meter so maybe they just want to keep going with that um, again we we do the conversion and all that stuff on our devices already so it's all programmed in so whatever volts per meter you get that would technically be the the, the same in microwatts per meter squared if you were to change the unit 
And then another change I noticed, which I think is a change for the better, is going from a different different type of sort of the mini connector here on the end of the old if I can show this or not. Yeah, you, I think you can just barely see it. Right, there. yes, so, yep, the, uh, the charge port. And so this is the older... Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. This is the older Safe and Sound Pro 2, and the new one has the port right here. So it's gone from the edge of the device to the front of the device, and, and the new one is USB-C, right? Is that correct? Correct, yeah. Yep, USB-C, yeah. The old one was uh, USB micro. Um, so, again, we were just trying to, I guess, I wouldn't say modernize, but a lot of the devices nowadays use USB-C, so we don't include the cable in the in the meter if you were to purchase it, right? So we just kind of wanted to make sure that all the people who do have um, things in their home already, they should already have access to a, a cable that should work for the device. And you called it a charge cable. Is Can you recharge batteries if you put recharge? That, 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 I, that was kind of a, a mis, mis, mis word on my part. It, it, it's kind of a, a port where it's a power port, so a continuous power port. So if you're going to use the device for, I guess, long periods of time, um, then you can plug it in so it powers the device. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't oh. charge the battery, sorry. No, well, no, I was getting excited, Kevin. Well, I thought that was going to be a, 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 a really new thing. I mean, so. it, is, um, it is something that we are, it's on our list there. Um, I think we are in the process of determining um, what the pros and cons are of having a rechargeable device. Um, of course, it, a lot of engineering goes into it. Um, so I'll kind of just leave it at that. Um, we're... It's on. It's on our list. It's on our list. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm not. Uh, not trying to get insight into future products. I just wanted to um, people to be to be clear. And so, you can run this device continuously if you like, right? Yeah. If, exactly. If, and that's if you what have, the, the the cable ports for. Right. So, for example, if you wanted to, you could take some Velcro and put it on your wall. And take another strip of Velcro and put it across the back and then run uh, USB-C to this power and you could leave it running theoretically. Is that is that right, Kevin? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, um, I guess, uh, one way you can do it is, is for smart meter monitoring, right? So not all smart meters transmit at the same intervals, right? So obviously you don't want to be standing there for two hours if they don't transmit every two hours. Right. So if you were to leave the device there, you're well aware of your environment's low levels um, and you come back and you notice, oh, there's a max number. So at, at some point it registered a high blip. Right. So that max number would be on the screen and then that'll sort of give you an idea of, OK, so when my smart meter emits, this is my exposure. Um, now I just got to determine when it's happening and how often it's happening. Right. Yeah, that's a really neat. That's a really neat thing to be able to do for people who, especially for people who have been sensitized and they need to keep a close watch on their environment. Or another use might, a new use case might be if you have a home that's protected, and you're having guests coming and going, and you don't want to make a scene about, you know, sort of scanning them when they come yeah, in. You, for you sure. can just have this thing running all the time, and if you notice that. You're getting some uh, readings that are not normal for your environment, then, then that can be very helpful for for people who have a, um, you know, a relatively pristine place where they live. So there's one other uh, difference exactly. that one other difference that I noticed was the headphone port, and we talked a little while ago about the importance of a sound function. It can be. If you're doing assessment work, it can be uh, troubling for people in the environment if you leave the speaker going. And if you want to be just a little bit more discreet about it, you can plug headphones or earbuds or whatever you like into the Safe and Sound Pro 2. That's not a new feature per se. This, um, you know, the older version has this uh, plug in port right here next to the USB mini. And that's been moved on the new product to the face of the product. 
So you can see right over here, this is where that the headphone um, interface comes from. And that's that's really all all I've noticed about it. Um, are there any other changes that I haven't mentioned? Oh, I think that's it. I think we covered um, the buttons to the switches. We covered the the type of charge cable, um, the display of the volume, um, the function of the switching of the units. Um, I think that's really it. Um, again, pretty simple, pretty simple meter um, to use, right? So not too many functions to begin with. But uh, but yeah, I think I think that's all. I don't think there's nothing that was done on the inside. So whatever Pro Two that you already have. Um, isn't going to be worse than the newer ones that have come out. Again, these are all just uh, physical changes on the outer casing. That's that's an important point uh, to notice. And it wasn't as though the product was was broken. It's just that as you're yeah moving yeah. forward in time, it's it's possible to do uh, revisions to it. And I think that's that's kind of what it's reflected here. So if you have an older model like Safe and Sound Pro 2, like the one that I've been showing here. I, I didn't need to go out and buy the new meter um, other than the fact that I teach assessment. And so I want to have what the students have. But it isn't as though I feel like there's something missing from my experience. So just saying, reiterating what Kevin said, you don't need to feel like you have to run out and get a new one unless somehow one of these features that we've talked about is uh, is indispensable for you. Okay, fantastic. Kevin, thank you so much for uh, for joining us today and giving us uh, a good a good uh, overview of what the most recent changes are on the Safe and Sound Pro 2. Appreciate your help. Yeah, no problem, no problem. It was uh, it was it was fun. Good thanks for having me and yeah, if if you ever need anything, you know where to find us, you and your customers. All right. Thank you.